Hey, how's it going dudes and dudettes? Bradley Guitologist here, or is it Charlton Heston in the movie Ten Commandments? Behold his mighty hand! <laughs> I have a package down here that I'm going to open. This is from Renoa at Renoa's Auspicious Travails, and I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, so we have the package here from Renoa that was promised uh, in exchange for the laptop that I sent. Hey, how's it going dudes and dudettes? Brad the Guitologist here. I want to make a quick video of this grid computer from the 1980s before I ship it off to someone. Uh, the other day, I actually I contacted one of the people who runs one of the channels that I watch quite frequently, Renoa's Auspicious Travails. Renoa does a lot of cool stuff. She's very just a curious personality, does a lot of kind of um, tinkering and fixing things and a lot of time, you know, uh, restorations of things and uh, working on a house with her good friend Bill, uh, who is a guitar player and who actually had already introduced her to my channel, which was which was weird. But I reached out to her because she uh, had demolished a couple of old console stereos. So last year I found this thing in the trash and I saved it from going into, into the dumpster. And I told the guys, hey, instead of throwing it in the dumpster, take it to my house. And that was a huge mistake because I don't want it. Nobody else wants it. Wow, it's actually tube based. Look at that. This stuff is definitely going to be capped. All the tubes and the radio and such. And then the speakers. It's actually going to be a nice little amplifier unit and all that. I noticed that they had tube amps in them, and of course, you know, everybody who watches this channel knows that we love tube amps here, so I reached out and said, hey, uh, what are you going to do with those? Because if you're just going to toss them or something, I'd, I'd like an opportunity to get them off your hands, take them off your hands, and she messaged me back and was uh, nice and said, hey, uh, you know, if, if you want, I'll just send these to you, and maybe we can work out some kind of trade later on. And she just happened to throw it out there. She said, if you have any old grid computers or, or something laying around like that. And I just happened to have this. I had picked up, saved it essentially from a yard sale my neighbor was having about three or four years back. My neighbor was having this yard sale and I was over there and they were like, hey, uh, maybe you'll know something about this because they knew I knew stuff about technology and this and that. And they pulled this computer out of this box and they were like, what, do you know anything about this? And I was like, honestly, I don't know much. Uh, I did a little bit of research at the time and found out that these grids were actually used a lot by uh, military personnel, uh, by government personnel in general. Uh, they are very sturdily built. Because of that, they were also used on a lot of job sites and, you know, and occupations like uh, industry and mining and things like that would have contracts with grid. There's really no telling what is on this. This could be anything from, you know, nuclear codes <laughs> to who knows what, man, could be on this thing. But this is a model 1755. Uh, you don't see a lot about the Model 1755 from what I can tell online. This should be a really cool one. So what we arranged for here is a trade. I'm going to send this old grid computer to Renoa who is going to try to start it up and uh, maybe get something off of it and see what's on it for one. Uh, see if the hard drive's even any good or what, whatever. Because uh, I don't know. The furthest I have gotten on this thing, I think at one time I tried to power it up. I do not have a power supply for this. We've got a serial bus here of some kind. We've got, here's a reset button. We've got brightness, high and low over here on the side. Uh, these are just really cool machines. We've got a uh, port for a phone cable back here. I don't know if that's Cat5 or, or it doesn't look as, it doesn't look big enough to be Cat5, but maybe it is. I don't know. No, it's not, that's not Cat5. That's like a standard phone cord. I don't know if it has an onboard modem or what the story with this is, but uh, here's a little bit more information on the bottom. This uh, model 1755, 16 volts at 1.25 amps is what we need for the power supply. But I do know they were, like I said, they were contracted to make stuff for the government quite a lot. This got a floppy 
So yeah, this, this should be really an interesting uh, video for Renoa's channel, and she's going to send me, like I said, a couple of tube amps. Uh, that should be an uh, interesting video for this channel. And if you guys want to see what ends up happening with this grid computer, definitely I will put uh, her information down in the description uh, where you can go check out her channel and subscribe and keep up with it and see what ha ends up happening with this. This should be an interesting trade and an interesting kind of cross-channel promotion if nothing else. But um, yeah, just a really cool old computer, man. I've always wondered what was on it. The, here's the furthest I got. Now I'll show you how we can power, try to power this thing up without an actual power supply. If you get the appropriate gauge of wire. Now right here on this wire, I actually had to double this end over. I don't know if you could see it, but this wire is about half the size that it needs to be. So what I ended up doing is doubling it over. You can see how it's bent over on itself on the end. So that, you know, thickened it up a little bit and it thickened it up enough so that I can get it in the, uh, the pause for the positive tip. So you put that in the center like that. Now I've got a probe. Okay. So now we've got a couple of probes going in the appropriate contacts. Uh, so here's my little bench power supply. So what we need to do first, this thing want, wanted to see 1.25 amps. We have the voltage set to uh, 16 volts. So what we do to set the amps is we want to short the probes together. Okay. And that's normal to see a spark like that. And right here you see 1.3 amps. And what you can do is you can change the current right there I'll just put it at about 1.26 amps and that's gonna get us right where we need to be 16 volts at about 1 1.28 amps so red is positive I don't want to mix that up on this because like we said it's positive center and I've got that yellow wire on the center so okay so in this case the ground is red and the yellow is positive Oh, we've got something. We've got something. I can hear. Uh, I can hear it trying to start up. We're also drawing about 0.3 amps. Something's definitely running. Nothing is coming up on the display. 0.3 amps is not excessive. I, I don't. I don't think anything is shorted or anything like that. So I'm going to let this test continue. I did not expect that because I think the last time I tried to do anything with this, um, I was thinking it had a, a power supply issue, but perhaps not. It looks like, man, this thing might just power right on up. And I'm just, I was just doing this out of curiosity because I, for my own sake, I wanted to know uh, if there was anything on it in case it got damaged in shipping also. I would just hate the thought of this thing getting destroyed in shipping or something, and then I never knew what was on it, so. I'm sure you can hear that. It's, this thing is running. I can hear a hard drive. At least I think I hear a hard drive. Maybe that's the fan. Now, the, this battery is useless because, I'll, well, I'll show you. I mean, you might even be able to see already that it's got some, uh, some leakage. I asked Ren, uh, Renoa if she's going to try to restuff this battery or what she's going to do. She's not sure yet. I mean, obviously, there's no way you're going to find one of these now that's any good. So what you'd have to do probably is restuff this with some new batteries to try to make it work. But the output on this is 12 volts on the battery. Um, and the unit's calling for 16 volt power supply, so... Um, it probably wants more voltage so that it can charge a battery at the same time that it's supplying voltage to everything else. I haven't hit the power button yet. I'm just going to see what happens when I hit the power button. Yeah, no, I mean, nothing's happening here. But... So I'll try to hold it down. Yeah, so I've got nothing, but I do have lights here, so that's promising. I mean... Perhaps this thing will not power up unless there is a battery. Let's do this. Let's shut, let's shut it down. And let's try to power it on again.
Okay, so now the power's hooked up and the lights are not coming on. So now we've got a green power. That's uh, that's new. Now it's checking for a battery. Number lock. Uh, okay. What do we got going? Is this gonna actually do something? It's trying to it's trying to read a disc. It's reading a disc. It's trying to read a floppy. I bet if I put like a Windows floppy in it, it would come on. You know what? It's been so long since I messed with like Windows. What's that? Some kind of error code? It's been so long, man, since I messed with any kind of uh, Windows 3.1 or anything with a floppy. Jeez, it's been like the year 2000, maybe, was the last time I messed with anything like that. We got green light on the power. We've got nothing doing on the display. Try to adjust the uh, brightness over here. I bet if I had a floppy with like a Windows 3.1, I bet I could get this thing to come up. God, it's been so long since I messed with any of this crap. This old. That's doing something. Look, the disc is being accessed. That's I can hear it happening with this light. See, I can turn the keypad on and off. I don't know if that applies to the function keys or not. But see, it it does work. So, you know, somebody's home here. This will be something definitely cool for Renault's channel. But this is as far as I... This is way further than I had ever gotten with this thing. Like I said, I think at one point I did try to start it up in this manner. And I don't remember the outcome, but I know I did not get it going. You know, I mean, we got capacitors and stuff in here from the 1980s, and who the hell knows what kind of state that's all that stuff is in. So it's actually powering on and off with the power button now, which is a really good sign. Before before I had to turn off the uh, power supply. It's trying to do something, man. It's trying real hard. So I think this is something that could be recoverable. Anyway, good luck to Renoa. Definitely, if you guys want to see the outcome of what happens with this thing, which I, I sure do, uh, go check out her channel. Subscribe down below. And uh, yeah, you'll get to see this. Also, we'll get to check out some tube amps that she sends us. So, so we're going to uh, check out what was sent to me, which is in this box right down here. Uh, let's see. So she's got all the tubes here in in these pill bottles and it looks like maybe they survived. I, I don't think they were in good shape to begin with just judging by the um, uh, judging by the videos that I saw. Yeah, there are two chassis. There's a chassis down here and there's a chassis up here. Now this one is the one that came straight off of the dump site. Now look at this crusty, crusty thing. I mean this is going to be fun, fun, fun until daddy takes the T-Bird away kind of restoration right here. This is, she actually pulled this off of a, uh, a big scrapyard dump. Straight up crusty uh, to the max. I mean, we've got we've got a lot to contend with on this one, and this is probably going to be the subject of some future restoration video. Uh, I will show kind of the whole thing, you know, edit all the clips that I have together, showing where this thing came from, uh, showing how it got to me, all that good stuff. But man, you can see this is going to be a fun one. These are hard to restore, even when they're in good condition because of just how cramped they are on the inside. But this one especially is going to be something because it's uh, it's basically just a chassis. I mean, look, look at that bumblebee cap right there. Just that cap says it all, doesn't it? I mean, it's 
split right in half, basically. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a cap that was literally split in half like that. But, I mean, this is... This is beyond rescue. This is going to be basically a gut... Um, a gut and rebuild kind of scenario. And, you know... When something is this crusty, there's questions whether or not even the transformers are going to be still good to use. Now, probably they'll be okay, um, but there's usually questions about that sort of thing when you've got this kind of water damage and stuff in them. You know, like I said, this thing was on a on a uh, scrap pile, a literal literal scrap heap that was that's like I don't know how many dozens of feet high. Um, but you can see it in her video how, how high the scrap pile is. So that's going to be an interesting restoration at some point in the future. Uh, this one, look at this. Now this was also out of the trash. This was a trash find, like a roads, but this was more of a roadside find. And this wasn't the, this wasn't the amp uh, found on its own. So this this actually was found uh, inside the console and the console worked. So this came out of a Magnavox console. This has got some six EU7s in the preamp and it's got uh, six BQ5 output. It's got four of those. This is going to be a probably a nice sounding chassis. If I wanted actually to make this into a um, you know a, a stereo amp and that probably Probably is what this one will remain as, is a stereo amp. Um, at least that's kind of the idea at the moment. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to put I'm gonna have to put this transformer back. As you can see, it broke off in shipping. So that that's going to need some it's going to need some screws or some rivets back in that to put that back down. But that's one of the transformers for the output and. Hopefully that didn't pull the, uh, when that came loose, hopefully it didn't rip. Uh, and it may have, it, it looks like maybe it ripped some of the leads a little bit. It certainly pulled on them, but I, I don't know. We'll have to check that out. But judging by the date code here 141103 so this is probably 1961 yeah 108 right there on this one so this is probably 1961 would be my guess on this for the date that one's a 1960 52nd week of 1960 on this date code so that's going to be a cool chassis. Um, I could I could change that um, or turn that into a guitar amp, quite possibly. But the thing is, it's it's got the stereo output already, so this really would make a better hi-fi amp than anything. This though will become a guitar amp most likely. So very cool. Yeah, um, this is going to be a very interesting one, a very good trade. I I have to say, um, you know, I found the little grid. Uh, laptop I found it in a neighbor's uh, yard sale anyway so it's not like I spent a lot of money actually it was given to me because they weren't gonna they didn't even know what it was they weren't gonna use it they didn't think they'd get much money out of it anyway so they were just like here just take that so that's the story on that thing and, and to get two chassis and all the tubes and stuff that I might be able to make into something at a later date definitely is worth a trade so thank you Renoa uh, thank you, Bill, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later, and definitely check out their videos down below.